Look around and see, every day is Black history. February is a reminder that history was created by men and women who look like you and me. It really made me think about how often we go through life interacting with people who have made significant contributions to how we do things every day, but we may or may not see it because we look at individuals as ordinary. And so when we think about our lives, each of our lives are extraordinary. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Confidence Restored podcast presented by CC America, also known as Confidence Centers of America and hosted by Tamaria Jordan. This is a show designed to help you build your confidence, increase your faith, and get mentally fit to overcome any trials and tribulations you may encounter. Through personal testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation, Tamaria and guests seek to inspire and uplift you. This message is delivered by us, CCing you on lessons learned in hopes of encouraging you regardless of where you are in life. Enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Tamaria Jordan and I am your host for tonight and today's topic is look around and see. Every day is Black history. So it actually made me think about a poem and I wrote the following, look around and see every day is Black history. February is a reminder that history was created by men and women who look like you and me. And so when I think about Black history, today has a special meaning for me because I think about different things that I've been working on over the years and different milestones that I've achieved just in my personal life. And it really made me think about how often we go through life interacting with people who have made significant contributions to how we do things every day, but we may or may not see it because we look at individuals as ordinary. And so when we think about our lives, each of our lives are extraordinary. Each of our lives has its own uh, background, its own heritage. We have our own experiences that make us who we are. We have our own personalities, the things that make us unique, that make us shine and make us stand out. And so today I want to encourage just letting people know, my brothers and sisters that are also Black, that you are a part of history. And for those who are not Black, realizing that you too play a part in Black history. And so I am really excited about this topic because this is an episode that will air on both the Confidence Restored and the Perspective View podcast, primarily due to the fact that I think it is such an important topic because sometimes we relegate the achievements and accomplishments of Black Americans to one month. When we think about any other race, history is history. They don't get a particular segment to say, here is where we celebrate you. Here is where we acknowledge what you've accomplished. But unfortunately, when you think about Black history and the roots of slavery in America, our history looks a little bit different. And so when you think about Black history and you think about where it originated, I did a little bit of research. And of course, these are things that you hear, but I wanted to make sure that I had my facts straight. So according to history.com, Black History Month, when you think about it, it is a annual celebration of achievements by African-Americans that happen to be celebrated in the month of February. And when you think about the history and the fact that this month was essentially the brainchild of Harvard-trained historian Carter G. Woodson, and much like W.E.B. DuBose, He believed that truth could not be denied and that reason would prevail over prejudice. And so he really wanted to raise awareness of African-Americans' contributions to civilization because he realized that many of the contributions that were being made were either not being recognized as being contributed to society by Black Americans or African-Americans, And so he wanted to really raise awareness of African-American contributions to civilization. So he founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life in History, uh, ASNLH, which ultimately led to Negro History Week in 1925. 
And so when you fast forward to 1976, every U.S. president from there on designated the month of February as Black History Month to commemorate the fact that many Black people have contributed to the things that we love and enjoy today. And now other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also have a month devoted to celebrating Black history, which is amazing. But imagine if he thought who he was was ordinary. Imagine if he thought that because it's never been done before, it will never be done, which actually leads me to many inventions that some of us may not even realize can be attributed to African-American creators or inventors. So in 1892, George T. Sampson developed and patented America's first automatic clothes dryer. And so I thought, you know what? That's a fact that I never knew. And some of it, I realized that we may not always learn these types of things in history books, so it is on us. We have the onus and responsibility to learn for ourselves, but then we also have the responsibility to teach others. And so as I'm learning, I like to share. And a couple of years ago, I posted every single day for Black History Month, multiple facts about Black history. But this year, I realized that every single day is Black history. In 1887, Alexander Miles patented a mechanism to automate elevator doors. And this was after his daughter almost fell down an elevator shaft. So the elevators that are in the buildings that we utilize was created out of a need that Alexander Miles saw after almost losing his daughter because of the fact that elevators, it's a higher floor, the likelihood of survival probably was low. And he realized because of that problem, we needed to find a solution. In 1923, Garrett Morgan invented the three signal traffic light. So the reason he developed this traffic light is because he witnessed a carriage accident in a busy intersection in Cleveland, Ohio. So again, Garrett Morgan wanted to solve a problem. In 1940, Frederick McKinley Jones patented the cooling system that merchants use today to preserve goods on trucks during ex extended periods of travel. So those trucks that you see going to and from your grocery store, it was a black man who created the cooling system that allows that to happen today in 2023. In 1966, Nurse Marie Van Britten Brown developed an early version of the home security system that we use today. So she created a device to put her mind at ease because of rising crime levels in Queens, New York. And so when you think about all of these inventions and these inventors, you think about the fact that it seems like it was so long ago, yet when you think about Nurse Marie Van Britten Brown, that wasn't that long ago. And so here we are in 2023, and it, it reminds me of something that I saw recently, and this is part of where I got this topic from. I saw an article about Dr. Marion Croak, and she is a Black woman who holds over 200 patents in technology, and she is actually credited with the initiation and furthering of voice over internet protocol, also known, known as VoIP. So without what she worked on, applications such as Skype, Zoom, and other huge tech giants who are using this type of technology today, case in point, me streaming to you, literally that would not exist had she not worked on those developments with her team. And so she is now the vice president of engineering at Google, she was previously the Senior Vice President of Research and Development at AT&T, but she holds over 200 patents in her name, which is amazing. In 2013, she was inducted into the Women in Technology International Hall of Fame. And in 2022, she was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for her patent for VoIP. And so fast forward, it makes me think about VoIP. When I was working in a prior job, I was a part of the team that helped roll out voice over internet protocol for our staff in a particular department within the company. 
And so I was one of many, but I was still a part of history for that company. And it made me think about patents. It made me think about life. And even when you think about slavery and the fact that many black inventors could not, no matter what they did, no matter what they contributed to society, could not register or obtain a patent in their name because they were enslaved. So it wasn't until slavery was abolished in 1865 and with the adoption of the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that Black innovators were able to claim their innovations. Because prior to that, if they were enslaved, they're enslavers or essentially in America at the time, white people were able to claim credit for those things in which they invented because they were not considered to be essentially a citizen and were oftentimes treated inhumane. And so when you think about today, there are so many people walking around on this earth that you might see in your grocery stores, that you may interact on your Zoom calls, that you may work with, that may be your friends and family, and you really genuinely have no idea how much they may have done and or what their contributions to society has been. And when I think about all of us in life, I think about the fact that what side of history do we want to be on? Do we want to be on the right side of history or the wrong side of history? Do we want to be people that enable others to succeed? Or do we want to be people that are known for slowing others down? And so I think about my own life and I think about the fact that I've had a lot of firsts. And some of those things I probably should look into patenting um, and or uh, protecting my intellectual property because I've done a lot of things. Even this podcast, both the Confidence Restored and the Perspective View podcast, I am the creator and the host. It's a first. It is a first. When I went to high school, I was in the first graduating class. And there were many African-Americans who also were in the first graduating class. They made history along with me. And I was the first valedictorian at the Appomattox Regional Governor's School again another history-making moment because I am a Black woman. And so then I think about other firsts. I think about the programs that I rolled out in my career and over the years. I was the first person to teach Zumba at um, at an office in Virginia Beach. And because I worked with the legal department, we were now able to offer the dance fitness training to staff wherever other regional staff members who had a license wanted to teach. I am a licensed Zumba instructor. And so the work that I did with the legal department at the company I worked for previously, it opened up doors for other people to teach that form of group fitness at the office. And I never really thought about it. I just did it because I wanted to be able to utilize this new license I had. But that in and of itself was a history making moment. And just so we're clear, I'm not saying this to toot my own horn, but I really just want you to realize how sometimes it's the simple things that we overlook. It's the simple things that we do that we take for granted and we don't realize that we too are a part of history. So fast forward, I mentioned the VoIP, the Voice Over Internet Protocol. I was a part of the team that helped roll that out for a particular department that essentially staffed well over 7,000 people at the time across the United States. Fast forward again, I was the first person to hold a training and development specialist and training and development manager title at a international insurance brokerage that had been in business for 70 years at the point in which I came in. Again, history. And Just last week, me and my team, a group of multicultural individuals had the opportunity to offer a training to city leaders and staff in three languages for the first time in the company's history. So we were able to offer the training in English, Spanish, and Portuguese for that particular program. So every single time we do something new, we are making history. But oftentimes we look at the things that we do as just commonplace. And I want to remind you today that nothing that you do is commonplace. You are not common. You are extraordinary. And again, you get to choose 
what side of history you will be on, whether you are on the right side or the wrong side of history. And if you are an ally for individuals who are considered colored or a minority, you too are a part of history. Because if you make decisions that enable someone else to rise, that enable someone else to shine, you too are a part of history. And so often we look at history as a moment in time, because it is, it's a moment in time that we can go back and look at, but we are literally walking history. We are literally making history every day when we wake up and we decide to do something new, when we decide to do something different, when we decide to solve a problem that hasn't been solved before. We are history makers. We are curse breakers. We are generational blessing makers. We are so much more than what meets the eye. We are a culmination of who we are at our core, but we also have life experiences, life lessons, and things that make us who we become, that change how we see ourselves, but then also that allows us to thrive and also help others thrive. So when you think about your intellectual property, I want you to think about your individual property as well. Because when we think about our intellectual property, when individuals get patents, it's because they are trying to protect their business or their invention from other people copying it or trying to create something similar. It's essentially a way to copyright your information as an inventor. But then there's copywriting for written works and derivatives and things like that. But then there's also trademarks for symbols. And so there, I would encourage you, if you are interested in that, to visit USPTO.gov. And that is essentially the United States Patent and Trademark Office. But that is where you can find information about how to protect your intellectual property. But I want you to consider as an individual how to protect your individual property. You are your individual property. You are the benefit. You are the one that needs to be protected. And so when I think about both the Confidence Restored podcast, which is all about faith, inspiration, and transformation, really helping people realize that confidence is a key to achieve anything. And then the perspective view. It is really looking to give voice to individuals who may otherwise not have a voice or may not be heard because their perspectives and or experiences may not necessarily be considered mainstream. But may I submit for your consideration today the fact that each of us has a role to play in this thing called life and that even though today is 228, 2023, that doesn't mean that is the end of Black history not for this year, not for ever. For as long as we are walking on this earth, we will continue to make new history. We will continue to to advance and make more achievements and do more things. Every single day we have that opportunity, but we have to make a choice. What do we want to bring to the table? Who do we think that we are? Because imagine all of those inventors, I'm pretty sure they heard a lot of no's. People were probably like, you can't do that. You can't finish that. You can't complete that. It's never been done before. It doesn't matter if it's been done. What matters is if you do it. And so I encourage you today to stand strong, to stand bold, and think about what you want to leave on this earth. What what do you want your mark to be? We think about trademark symbols. What do you want your mark to be? What do you want your life to say? What do you want people to remember about you? So when you walk past people, don't assume that anyone is ordinary. All of us are extraordinary. All of us have the ability to impact history, but we get to choose how we do that. And my hope is that you will choose to be on the right side of history and make good decisions that impact people in a positive way that is not selfish and for vain ambition and conceit, but really to look at ourselves humbly and say, you know what? I know who I am. I know whose I am with regard to what you believe, but then also realizing that I know what I can do. I can see things that maybe others don't see. I may have a vision. And the reason that you have a vision is because that vision is for you. Other people may not understand your vision. So you can't necessarily let other people tell you what you can and can't do. And so when I think about that, 
I, I think about the fact that it is definitely a time and a place for everything, but there's always a place for you. There's a place for the things that you want to accomplish and the things you want to do. And so again, I just encourage you today. I encourage you to consider, consider all of the things that you personally want to accomplish. Consider all of the things that you thought you couldn't do and try it. You really don't have anything to lose when you think about it. You have everything to gain by being true to yourself because when you are true to you, there is absolutely no limit to what you can do. And I will close out today with a quote that I shared. um, It was actually two years ago. And the quote was from Michael Jackson. And it said, if you enter this world knowing you are loved and you leave this world knowing the same, then everything that happens in between can be dealt with. And so on this day in 1984, the King of Pop won eight Grammy Awards, which was an unprecedented single night for an artist during that time. And so when you think about that, he defied the odds and his legacy lives on. And so his music still plays. People still absolutely love his music and they share it. And so I think about the fact that he didn't know that on this day in 1984, that that would be the accomplishment that he achieved. But look at that now. And as he said, even if you leave this world, our hope is that you know that you are loved and that what you do makes a difference. And so I wrote, I am Black history. You are Black history. We are Black history. It does not end on February 28th. (laughs) It continues because every day is Black history. You just have to look around and see. You literally are in the midst of some very extraordinary people. Get outside of your comfort zone. Get to know someone new and learn from one another. And also study, study for yourself so that you can learn about the contributions that others have made. Because if we just go by what someone else says, they may miss important details. We are fortunate right now that we can go to the source. We can connect with people on LinkedIn. We can message them on Facebook. We can follow up with them on TikTok and Twitter and whatever social media platform you want to use. There are ways to connect with people, to learn about them, to be intrigued about their lives and their journey because no one's life and journey is linear. You will find that there's a lot more that connects us than what separates us. So I hope that you will take something away from this today and realize that it shouldn't take a month for us to learn about each other, that there's always an opportunity to learn. We are living in a generation where things are happening fast. Technology is changing fast. We are changing fast. Um, The world in which we live, it's changing fast. Think about COVID, how many inventors and individuals who did things they had never done before happened as a result of COVID, as a result of something that was not necessarily a good thing because we lost a lot of people during COVID and COVID is still here. And so you think about that. Oftentimes the innovation is created out of a need. And so if you see a need and you feel like, hey, I I can do something about this, by all means, do it. Take a chance because you never know what it could lead to. You never know what that experience may allow you to create. So I hope that you would be encouraged by this message, that you would keep on keeping on, as I say, and that you would consider a different perspective as it relates to Black history and every day. Thank you for tuning in to a live taping of both the Confidence Restored podcast and the Perspective View podcast. You can listen to the Perspective View podcast at www.theperspectiveview.com and you can listen to the Confidence Restored podcast at confidencerestoredpodcast.com. You can also check out the link in the description, which will include the link tree, which has all of the links for both shows. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a beat. 
And please be sure to leave us a comment and rate the show so we know how you think we're doing and also so other people can get access to this content as well. Thanks for your support and have a good night.